episode of Reset Revolution. My name is Sara Kimura and I am a high school student currently studying in Paris. Um, so for today we are going to be joined by Vanessa, a self-love coach um, or a life coach specialised in self-love. And let's see if we can. Vanessa will be joining shortly um, to briefly introduce ourselves. Um, we are Reset Revolution, a group of international Hi. students. Hello, Vanessa. Hi. I was just introducing what we do. Yeah, so uh, we, we are a group of international students dedicated to the fight against social injustice. And today we'd like to discuss about the relationship between um, self-love and social justice and how it's so important to activists in particular. So hello, Vanessa. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Very good. And you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Vanessa, could you maybe start off by introducing yourself? Yes, of course. So hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Vanessa. Uh, I'm a certified life coach specialized in self-love. And uh, I teach uh, and post on social media about uh, self-love in Japanese and English, mostly. Thank Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, um, Vanessa, could you maybe begin by explaining what self-love is for those who might not know about it? Yes, of course. So I think um, self-love could be maybe explained in different ways. But for me, self-love is, of course, loving yourself, uh, meaning that you know you're worthy no matter what. Um, you're worthy, like, unconditionally. You don't have to achieve big things to receive love. You're already worthy of love. And you have just as much worth uh, as everyone else. And you have the right to be happy and to achieve all your goals and your dreams. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so lovely. Just <laughs> because I feel like, of course, our, our platform, we, we are a social justice initiative. And I feel like um, when we're so um, committed to spreading awareness about something, I often feel like we have to stop and kind of rethink about the definition of self-love and if we're properly you know doing that to ourselves yeah um so how do you feel um about how the the issues that are caused by the lack of self-love mm -hmm. and how would you say it connects to social justice okay so there are quite a lot of ways in which um a lack of self-love can manifest it really depends on people uh the things that we make me most see is like a, a tendency to compare yourself to others uh to mm -hmm. feel yourself to say um i'm less worthy than others everyone is doing great but me or um yeah you could have like a really low uh self-confidence uh, you just don't believe in yourself and your ability to achieve things and but there's also um another way that i think not many people talk about uh that can be caused by a lack of self-love which is uh having a big ego uh mm -hmm. people who have like a big ego and um who pretend to be really self-confident when in fact it's just like a, a mask just to show that deep inside they don't really um believe that they're worthy of love so mm -hmm. to really like um reassure themselves that they are great because they think they're not they try to like show off and think they're better than others and where i think it connects to social justice um for example discrimination and feminism and all these matters there's always like a group of people who think they're above others so for example in feminism it can be patriarchy men thinking that they're above women because they have like deep down maybe they don't have embraced their feminine side like they're all like about the toxic masculine you know what I mean mm -hmm. and for mm -hmm. discrimination for example it can be uh, a group of people needing to be separate from others to like reassure themselves about their identity because deep down um, they just don't feel they're worthy so they need to be a little others to mm -hmm. pull themselves up and that's where I think like all like 
um, discrimination can start when you're deep down, you're not, you don't think that you're worthy and you don't feel connected to other human beings. Mm -hmm. So you need to like separate yourself. Yes. Uh huh. Indeed. Like I, I do really see that because obviously like in the world, there's usually the oppressor and the oppressed. But then I, I really do see how people oppressing are often insecure and you can yeah. kind of really see the insecurities through these hate crimes, hate speeches, these, it, it really does um, connect a lot with self-love. Yes, I, I really think so. Um, and yeah, like in general, like if, if like you really think that you're worthy of love, no matter what, then usually you're really convinced that other people do as well, no matter what they look like, no matter their religion, even if they have a different like political view than you, even if they have a different background than you, like you really do feel connected to other people when you just love yourself unconditionally. So you like, you're more able to love others unconditionally as well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, definitely. Yes. The voices in the comments saying that that is, really that is so true and mm. um, the next question is um how do you feel or how do you see all the misconceptions of self-love i think like the biggest misconception is um self-love being um narcissistic um being <laughs> selfish loving yourself is like oh like i'm i'm the best i think i'm better than other people so i do everything for myself which is not the case like there is a difference be between narcissism and self-love between like narcissism is like thinking that you're better than other people but self-love is knowing that you're just as worthy as everyone else so you're worthy and knowing that everyone else is also worthy i think that's really the difference mm -hmm. <laughs> between mm -hmm. self-love yeah, and no, yeah it is really important to kind of um know its differences really. yes and like the thing that like um what really convinces me that self-love should be something that everyone should work on is that being like uh, at your like at your best, like being genuinely happy in your life, you will be one hundred percent more able to help other people. Yes, mm -hmm. when like you're taking care of yourself, when uh, you you feel like you feel okay, you feel you feel strong, and like you feel okay. I mean, mentally and physically then like you will be able to put your gift and <laughs> gifts and like knowledge or whatever or your time for other people you will be 100 percent more um capable of doing that mm -hmm. yeah no yeah really <laughs> uh -huh, another voice saying so true and also there's <laughs> also a comment um from mariana saying mm -hmm. that it is especially in japanese culture people mistake confidence and selfishness slash narcissism narcissism you know it, yeah, it is so, really yeah. unfortunate yeah, I have not. Uh, mm -hmm. and it also says how people should know you can love yourself and still be humble exactly exactly mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. it really is important and also kind of um going back to the question before i just thought this was like a lovely comment again from mariana saying yes. how um lack of self-love makes them desperate for feeling better about themselves uh, which results in those people running to bring other people down. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mariana. That's no. Exactly that. Exactly the point. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to the next question. Um, this is kind of like the main topic of our talk today, I guess. Yes. Then many of our viewers are social justice activists, um, quite young, um, and they're all striving to raise awareness about social issues in their own community, whether it's within their family, with their friend group, at their school, on their social media. Mm -hmm. um, but then could you please explain the importance of self-care for these social justice activists? Okay, so like uh, I've mentioned a bit before, um, I've realized myself because I really do, uh, for me, these um, matters are so impor important. So mm -hmm. like when you're really passionate about bringing awareness around these topics, you have a tendency to be so overwhelmed by all these informations and like, like all this suffering and like all these problems in the world that you wish to fix. And like you, you can really be overwhelmed really quickly if, 
and you're not careful just like checking instagram and seeing like all these things that are not right and you're so like passionate and you feel in your heart that you want to make a change even a small mm -hmm. change but like if you are not careful um you will be so overwhelmed yourself and um you will uh, have a really hard time even processing all the information and that's why a self-care like comes in comes in the picture because if you do take time to actually um, take care of yourself um, make sure that um, your mental health is is okay you're taking some time away also from social media just process everything because it's really heavy like everything that's going on so just process everything take some time to also um, just cherish yourself you know like knowing that you're doing everything that you can because mm -hmm. um, like with social justice it's so easy to feel like you're not doing enough you know that yes. like you're like oh i wish i could do more but what can i do like i don't have all that money like i'm just like i said maybe there are teens so there are still students they're like oh i wish i could I, do, I could do more like what can i do i'm just a little like student in this enormous system and uh, it can really impact i think your self-esteem and your your confidence in the long run if you're not careful so know that you're doing amazing it's already amazing the fact that you're so passionate about it the fact that you're actually educating yourself on these matters um it's already enough like it's already a lot and the fact that on top of that you're willing to um share all that knowledge and your passion with your community and that you're ready to have these difficult conversations is amazing. Like you're already doing amazing. So don't be too harsh on yourself. Um, and like know that you're allowed, you're allowed to take some time off too. You don't like to be a good, good activist. You don't have to be every day, like on social media, every day, like fighting mm -hmm. every battle. Um, it's okay to to choose your battle, it's okay to rest, um, it's okay if you don't want to talk about it too, you don't have to be like a speak person like every minute of the day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you like, some people can really like, um, like re respond to some DMs or something and really like be mean, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So if you don't feel like responding, you don't even have to respond, you know what I mean? You don't have to take all this heavy weight on your shoulder you're mm -hmm. allowed to rest and by resting and taking care of yourself you're also doing the cause a service and mm -hmm. that's where i think self-care really um can be like a really good tool for a young activist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like okay. just throw away the guilt <laughs> and mm -hmm. take time for yourself if you feel overwhelmed and you feel really anxious about everything just like take take it slow just like put the phone down and take a bath like uh, give yourself a massage you can chill mm -hmm. and watch something that is not politically involved on netflix you can mm -hmm. just a silly show on netflix and think about something else and then you will come back later like more energized and mm -hmm. more ready to take on the fight again mm -hmm. wow i mean I literally just hearing that really felt like the biggest support I've had throughout <laughs> this journey of fighting for social justice. It's just, oh. wow, no, thank you. I, I was literally like, thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no. like, it, it really, uh -huh, it's so important. Mm -hmm. And because um, actually our first comment was um, from Mariana, which said how I, I found myself being unable to be attentive towards social activism when I had a hectic week with super limited time for self-care and yeah. yeah that's it's so it's so true that um when you're so consumed especially on yeah social media and this kind of information society right now like there's constantly uh, notifications that there's another terror attack there's another you know hate crime that's happening it, it's just yes. really a big burden sometimes and yeah. then as you said it's so important to kind of stay away from that sometimes exactly exactly maria i see marina said you deserve to set those boundaries yes so true mm -hmm. like um 
I felt myself because I, I've been through that, so I know like when you're so passionate about these um, topics, um, even like uh, I know Mariana is uh, passionate about like um, body positivity. Um, so I even know like about body, body positivity, like when you're just denouncing something, mm -hmm. um, like you have a tendency to want to be perfect. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you mm -hmm. want to always show up and, and uh, be this example <clears throat> but like it was really important to me to know that I'm also like just a normal human being and I have mm -hmm. my limits and I have to be careful not to like to really respect those limits to be able to yeah show up um, as my best self so mm -hmm. if I'm too tired if I'm too busy and I can't show up um not to beat myself down and mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. that i'm already doing my best i already have a lot to handle on my plate and mm -hmm. yeah change will happen when we are all like <clears throat> dedicated to the cause but when we are also all taking care of ourselves in individually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you don't have to be a superhero you know what i mean <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one single individual and together like as as a community we will make some change mm -hmm. yeah no definitely like you said right now it should really come in a pair how like self-care should be a part of the activism yes. and actually something um that made me slightly hesitant about the title today was that it's self-care for social justice activists and i feel like the word activist sometimes makes few people feel like oh you have to stand out there you have to join like a march or like you have to have like a public account where you you know, address all these sorts of pe people. But then, obviously, um, I feel like just speaking, talking to your family members could be, like, that. that is a, a very important part of activism. I feel like you should start with people around you, educating them about, um, yeah. obviously, like, also my family, too. Like, they, um, they're not conscious of their bias sometimes. Yes. And... You know, just reminding them them sometimes that it could be a burden and self-care is really important there as well. Yeah, so true. So, so, so true. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think there is a big, um, uh, I don't know what's the word for it. Like the word activist is such a big word. I think yeah. some people don't even feel the right to even use it to describe mm -hmm. themselves. But I think it would be... Uh, serving the cause to really loosen the this like the the definition of the word because I think just yeah like you said having this very difficult conversation with your family and your friend is always is already like an act so it's already like an act for the cause so you're already being active in some way and yeah you you're an activist baby <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah no very true like you have you have the courage yeah, you had the courage and i think like having yeah. this difficult conversations with your family like the people who are closest to you is actually the most difficult thing because you, you really know yeah. them your family like it's really like close to your heart so you mm -hmm. don't want to you know like worsen the relationship and like yeah. Like, truthfully, you don't want to have, like, such a difficult conversation, but you know that it's the right thing to do to make things change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So kudos to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Mariana says, even I don't feel fully 100% comfortable calling myself activist. Yeah, no, no, me neither. But then, hey. it, <laughs> it, I, yeah, no, but then I feel like it is also important to know that we are all, yeah, we are all activists. Yeah, because we are active in some way <laughs> for, for something that we believe in, so, yes. Yeah. Ooh, Mariana says, that's why I use the term enlightener in my bio profile on Instagram. But now you both inspired me to be more comfortable with calling myself an activist. Oh, I love you, Mariana. I, <laughs> I love the word, the word uh, enlightener, too. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, no, that's wonderful, actually. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Enlightener, uh -huh. I, I might actually yeah, switch up to that sometime as well. Um, but then I, I feel like um, listening to this, all this um, connection with um, self-care and so just social justice, I, it kind of um, reminded me of the time when there were lots of um, 
Asian hate crimes around. And I feel like when you relate to the people who are being attacked in particular, mm-hmm. it often, it, like looking at social media, talking about it is sometimes like, it's, it's just such a big strain. And that was when I had to kind of um, take a rest from social media for a bit then just I feel like if I knew then that because I kind of I had a period where I felt really powerless Mm. for not doing enough just you know cutting myself out of social media isn't going to prevent another shooting from happening or Mm. like you know another um, elder in New York being you know um, tripped over so Mm. I, I it's just I had that really yes dark period in a way but then I feel like if activists kind of um, continue to remind people that um, self-care should come as a part of activism like sustainable activism I guess yeah yeah Yeah, I love that word Mm -hmm. so important especially for teens I feel we're going through like a period of mm -hmm, discovering things Thank you, Mariana. <laughs> so, I, I love this kind of um, self-care, self-love environment over here. It's... Yes, like especially as teens, like um, you guys, you're the future of this uh, society. So to be able to really ha- like have long-term um, activism, like you said, like to for it to be sustainable, you really have to really learn how to incorporate self-care in your like daily life. Mm-hmm. so that you don't burn yourself out or you don't feel like oh my god like I can't do anything I feel um or feel powerless like you said you really have to make it a routine like something that is really natural for you yeah and to really work on um getting rid of the, the guilt or the pressure and knowing that yeah taking care of yourself is also taking care of what you're fighting for so like in the long term it will be even more effective if you mm-hmm. really have like all the energy and all the the place in your heart to be able to dedicate so much energy for mm-hmm. something so big mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah no very important mm-hmm. and here it says i often feel powerless when i see other prominent activists being severely attacked especially on twitter i often find myself dwelling i'm um in guilt for standing up for them on twitter oh my god yes Mm -hmm. i really felt that (laughs) yeah yeah no it is a real burden when it but then i i guess if there's that sense of community and kind of you know obviously mariana feeling like you know she's you know part of this together i think that Mm -hmm. kind of um is a way of empowering each other very important Mm -hmm. exactly and knowing that um like in the long term as long as like you're you're proud of like what you're doing as long as you're living a lot that you're proud of you know that it's the right thing to do um like really like you don't have to feel guilty for it you know what i mean like sometimes i really do think about oh my gosh, should I really share that much about like all these uh, issues? Like, because I have, I have had uh, problems in the past, people DMing me, um, especially last year of the, of like all the March for Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. Um, I really posted like a lot, a lot. And uh, I've had so many DMs of people telling me that they didn't feel comfortable mm-hmm. texting this and that I should be more mindful of how I make people feel. Mm-hmm. And I was also um, sharing a lot in Japanese too. And these DMs were mostly in Japanese. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, like, I know, like, for me, it was the right thing to do. And so I didn't feel guilty about it. But that really made me think that when you, like, when you um, point to something that is taboo, mm-hmm. that is not usually talk- talked about, um, yeah, it can, it can really, um, um, I don't know what's the word, but it can really, yeah, upset some people and reflect mm-hmm. reflect to them something that they maybe didn't want to think about. Mm-hmm. 
And I guess like for so many people, when they uh, get on social media, they expect to see something perfect, you know, like they went to see maybe celebrities on their vacation or, or something. So when you, they see something as real and as, as raw mm -hmm. as that, um, yeah, I think it can upset many people. So that's why it's also important for you, like when you share those posts to be aware that, yeah, it's not, it's not going to, it's not going to appear like the right thing for everybody, but in your mm -hmm. heart, if you know that that's what you want to do and that's, that's what it's important uh, for you, you have the right to use your social media account like you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so, nobody can tell you anything about the way that what you post, like how do like the way you use your account, it's your account. So if they don't like it, um, they're free to unfollow you or mute you or whatever. But like, yeah, at the end of the day, if you're proud of what you're doing and if it's important for you, um, yeah, just do it. Like, would you have like um, regrets not doing anything in the future? If like you're saying, like if you think about it and you like in five years, you'll be like, oh, I wish when I was younger, I more i spread the word more or i was mm -hmm. more aware of that or i wish i had that conversation with my friends back then then you might consider start starting maybe sharing it now so yeah you don't have to yeah if it's, if it's important to you you don't have to you don't owe anyone you don't owe anything to anyone that's basically what i would say and what mm -hmm. i've been telling myself like if it's important to me, then like my friends that that I may or, like watching my stories uh, should understand. Mm -hmm. If they don't understand, then maybe they don't really know who I am deep down. They don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Very true. <laughs> Over here, Mariana saying how I find it funny when, uh, oops, I find find it funny when people find actual real world problems uncomfortable. Um, I mean, imagine being the person being affected by them in everyday life. Exactly. So, so true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, if people don't like what you post, they can simply just unfollow and go on with their lives. Yeah, people, uh -huh. exactly. yeah, I feel like there's a stigma around kind of like unfollowing yeah. or not or, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't, like, if you don't like it, um, you don't have to like be mean about it like if you see this person is passionate about this um social injustice and they want to talk mm -hmm. about it and i don't see why if you think it if you think it's not necessary why would you go into their dms to be like i think you're wrong like yeah. if it's um if it's a, a close friend and uh, you think they're wrong for like actual reasons like we have facts i think it's healthy to have a debate maybe mm -hmm. it's like someone that's really close to you someone who is like willing to listen to you you know what i mean yeah. willing mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. like healthy real yeah. debate then yes i think it's healthy to actually have a conversation with them uh it's not a waste of your time and energy if of course you feel like talking about it but like if it's just like plain mean dms um i think you should protect your energy probably you have yeah. yeah, dms that kind of show the insecurity you know yeah they feel yeah because i realized they feel personally attacked that's mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. why uh, picked mm -hmm. up on mm -hmm. yeah they well, feel like they wouldn't that right. targeted even though yeah. it, was, it was wasn't about them it was just about some problem but they feel targeted for example if it's about um like I'm, I'm saying uh, this happened. Uh, for example, there was a for a foreigner, a foreign girl from Sri Lanka who died uh, in prison in Japan. Yeah, and she mm -hmm. wasn't given uh, necessary medical care, and I posted about it. Um, I'm sure a lot of people thought it was anti-Japan or something. Like it was like, oh, she hates Japan or something. Mm. It's, not, it's not the point. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's not, a, not a, don't have to take it personally or something. You know. I'm just pointing out at a problem in a system as it like as a human being and I, and I can't help but think it, it could have been me you know what I mean I was a foreign girl in Japan yeah. what 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 if I had um um if I was from a, a poor country and I didn't have the mean to uh continue my my education in Japan but I also 
was mm -hmm. um, if I did went back to my country, I might have been into like deadly danger. What would you do if it, if it was you? And I think that's like where empathy um, really is really important. Not mm -hmm. to think like um, from your own perspective, but really think about like the other person. Because like, mm -hmm. yeah, like Mariana said, why does it make you uncomfortable? What if it was you? Would you, would you like other people to care? I think yes. So, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah, be, no, I... Be more, like, uh -huh. empathetic. Yeah, like, I, I always do that. I always try to put myself into other people's shoes. And, and I was like, yeah, if I was them, I would want people to talk about this story. If this happened to my family, if this happened to my community, uh, I would want people to share, at least share about this story so that they know what happened. This is the least mm -hmm. I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very true. Um, actually, moving on to our final question. Um, Vanessa, do you hear me? Are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Sorry, um, your your screen was frozen for a bit. Um, but then, um, finally, uh, what would you like our audience to kind of take from this interview? Okay, uh, what I really want them to remember is like with what we said, uh, you deserve to take care of yourself first, because um, it's going to really. Um, serve your the cause that you're passionate about too so don't be too harsh on yourself when you feel really overwhelmed um like just take a break and um, put the phone down and have some me time i uh, you can i uh, read something that you like you can listen to music you can dance the stress away you can take take a bath or you can talk to a friend uh, someone that you know understands you and uh, shares similar values uh, it's also important uh, if you're passionate about these topics to have like a like-minded community uh, of people who you who can understand what you're going through so that you don't feel alone because i think it's really easy to feel really lonely um, when you're so passionate about these topics and yeah love yourself you deserve to you deserve to feel good and safe and um it's amazing what you're doing but um know that it's important to have balance in the long term for it to be sustainable you're doing amazing <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no beautiful message thank you so much vanessa it like it really is um i think be no, because our followers yeah are very i hope it, i hope it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And um, I feel like we can now move on to Q&A section, maybe. Can you hear me, Vanessa? Or am I frozen? Oh, I mean, I think Vanessa's Wi-Fi is not at its greatest, I think. But, mm-hmm. I, th I think the message just um, that Vanessa has um, told us here is just very important, especially for teenagers who are the majority of our audience. Oh, I feel like Vanessa's network is getting worse. Mm. I actually had this question I wanted to ask her about um, what inspired her to become a self-love coach. But um, what can we do? Vanessa? Oh, it's Vanessa, you're back. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. perfect. Thank you, yes. Vanessa. Sorry. I, I think your Wi-Fi was a bit unstable. Am I right? Oh, no. Oh, but you oh, can hear I me now? My... I'm oh, so sorry. Oh, really? Yes, I can hear oh. uh, No, yes. no problem. Um, yeah, no, you're back. Uh, <laughs> so I, I actually did have a question. Um, I mean, um, like now it's just Q&A corner, so if any of you have a question or if you want to like, you know, pop in what you thought about today or if it applies to you. Okay. Um, yeah, please just uh, put it down on the comments. And um, Vanessa, can you kind of share about briefly about how or like what led you to become 
a self love coach. H- how um what what made you be- what made you want to pursue the career you are pursuing right now? Okay. Um. So I I'm going to do the, the short story, but basically, um, when I was 18, um, I had uh, big health problems. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Uh, it's an autoimmune disease of the digestive system. Um, so it's uh, it's a chronic disease. So basically, there's no healing from it. Um, I have like lifetime treatment for it. And when I was really, really um, sick, um, I went through depression. I was really depressed. And I didn't have any life purpose. I didn't know what to do with my life. And I was really depressed. And I reached a very, like, dark, um, dark place. And basically, I was like, I can't live like that. I have to do something about it. What can I do? And basically, I started um, uh, reading uh, self-development books, like books mm-hmm. something like How to Be Happy. And um, and then I, I discovered self-development. And I was like, whoa, what, what is that? What is that whole new world? This is so amazing. And I discovered self-love. And I was like, whoa, I have so little self-love. I think I basically hate myself. That's, and I, when you hate yourself, um, I think it's at the core of like so many problems in your life. It's going to impact everything like your work life, your relationships, uh, just how you present yourself to the world, your confidence, everything. So when I realized that like the deep down, um, like the deepest problem that I had, that it was re- like how I saw myself basically. And I started working on my self love basically. And after like, six years of practicing self-love for myself and seeing like such a huge transformation in my life and I was like oh my god I wish everyone knew that and uh, basically when I was in Japan I was um, mainly a translator um, and I was so unhappy because I felt like I didn't help people like I wanted to Um, I was talking about self-love like on my blog and stuff but I was like, I really want to do this full time. I really want to dedicate my life for people and like to help them um, with self-love and learn what I learned myself and mm-hmm. teach them uh, what really changed my life, basically. So I came back to France mm-hmm. and I did a life coaching um, training. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, I just started right now. I got my diploma last month. And now I'm I'm excited to teach um, self love to people mm-hmm. to more people. So that's yeah, that's basically my story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's so lovely, and I feel like um just when you said how um you felt like you weren't helping enough for when you yeah. were a translator, I feel like that's also something that kind of um merges with uh, social justice activism. Going back to our topic, it mm-hmm, you could feel like you're not doing enough. Mm-hmm. Even yeah, you feel like your yeah. limit is too low. Or, then it is really important to kind of take a moment, like you said, yeah. to, mm-hmm. and know that like um y- like life is long. Like you don't have to do everything at once. <clears throat> you can take your time to like if like if you feel that in the long term. Um, what you want to accomplish for that you need to go to college don't feel guilty for being a full-time student and not being able to post more on social media because in the long term you might like with your knowledge you might be able to help even more in the future so if you feel like um, education is really important to you don't feel guilty that you're not like a full-time activist yet it's it's okay you know what I mean just do Mm -hmm. at your own pace that's what Mm -hmm. is important oh it's so lovely Thank you so much, Vanessa, for joining us today. And I, oh, am... I hope I have some help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely, I'm sure that um, the, all the teenage activists listening to this, whether whether it's yeah, just 
you know, limited to their family still, or, you know, it's out in social media, I feel like, yeah, people will mm -hmm, be very empowered by your message. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining today, and I hope you have a great afternoon. And yeah, despite Thank all you, the- Thank you, you too, yeah. and- mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I'm despite all the white- sending love, and kudos to all the young generation that is so passionate about all these topics. You're really an inspiration uh, for the older generation and you're doing amazing. Yeah. Just know that. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, yeah, see you. Thank you. Have a good Sunday. Have a good Sunday. Bye. Bye.